The carpenter's curse is lumber. We have it standing everywhere in our shops and we add to it every time we do a project. And no lumber is more of a hassle than plywood. Standard ply comes in 4x8 sheets and these dimensions mob our shop space. You need a huge wall space to lean it against and it's a huge pain to move around constantly. I'm starting to build lumber storage for the new shop and my biggest concern was plywood. I wanted to be able to move plywood around easily and keep it tidy. So I knocked together a basic cart that would handle all my plywood storage needs and give me a great space for other lumber cutoffs. Today I'm gonna to show you what it is and how I built it. And that's coming up next on The Honest Carpenter Show. So this build is basically just a rolling lumber cart, but it's maximized specifically for plywood. And the first thing you'll notice is that it's big. This full cart is 40 inches wide, 96 inches long, and about 55 inches tall. Yes, it's gonna take up some floor space, but it's going to free up more floor space by compressing your sprawled out lumber supplies. And I think you could engineer slightly smaller versions of it by shrinking the box storage side if you wanted to. I'm gonna park mine in this corner where it'll be out of the way and where it will also line up with the door. One of the big problems with plywood storage is that you need double the space to draw sheets out. Eight feet for the cart itself and another eight feet to pull a full sheet. By lining it up with the door, you can draw long components straight out through the open door space if you need to. This idea would be really handy in a shop slightly smaller than mine. Full sheets will go into this open bay. It has a plywood cleat at the bottom to prevent kick out and a 10 degree wall to create lean. The A-frame itself can hold narrow full length sheets or partial sheets at both ends. And I'll use the top hole for long skinny ripped pieces. There are three deep boxes on the other side. One is 49 inches wide, so it can hold half sheets easily. And the smaller boxes are just shy two feet wide, good for that huge array of skinny cutoffs that infest every wood shop. I'll do other storage for long dimensional lumber, and I'll probably have a place for really short cutoffs, but this thing by itself is gonna hold the bulk of the wood in my workshop, especially plywood. With that said, I'll run you really quickly through how I built it. The whole unit is made of three quarter inch sand apply, which for some reason is cheaper than all other plywood right now. The A-frame was the hardest part. I beveled my circular saw to cut 10 degree rips. You can check your bevel by cutting a 10 degree scrap on the miter saw, then using it to set your circular saw accurately. I clamped a ply straight edge and ripped as close to the edge of the board as possible. The bevels on the long edges were parallel to one another. I then used the table saw to rip opposite bevels on a two inch wide piece. I glued and shot this to the top of my beveled large panels using a ply scrap as a stop lock at the end. Then, standing everything up, I glued and shot the opposite panel on so it angled away. I wound up with this huge V. I then ripped a long 9 inch piece with the bevel on both sides. This became the high shelf in my A-frame, which stiffened the outer walls considerably when I glued and shot it into place. I also added 1.5 inch trim screws for strength. The floor of the unit is just a 40 inch wide full rip, which I made freehand for speed. I ripped a two inch piece for the kick out cleat, shot it on with brads, and then added trim screws. At that point, I ripped a full sheet into long 23 inch wide panels. I cut one up into 18 inch pieces and held a piece up to the side of my A-frame to scribe the right angle. These became my box dividers. I cut all these freehand, using the first one as a pattern for the others. Then, I simply positioned them where I wanted them against my second 23 inch panel. I shot them in place with brads and fortified them with trim screws. I made sure to plumb the inner ones up with the buzzard wing square and then square the bottoms with the speed square. This also required climbing into the A-frame to screw the inner divider connections. A pretty tight squeeze. After that, I attached the whole thing down with trim screw toenails and underside screws into the box walls. That was the whole A-frame. I stood it up and got it out of the way. For the platform, I cut four 37 inch 2x4 pieces and left two 2x4s full length. I shot all these together with a framing gun and a compressor. I could have also used 3 inch screws, I just did this for speed. I then attached the 4 inch lockable casters to the bottom using 1 and a quarter lags and washers. I pre-drilled marked holes, then used my impact driver with the quarter inch bit extender and the right socket attachment. When they were all in, I flipped the thing and shot extra support blocks into the corners. I didn't worry about putting an extra lag in here, nothing really wanted to move. I put the caster frame on the ground and pulled the plywood A-frame down onto it without crushing myself. After a little lineup work, I just screwed the two units together with 1 and 5 8 screws. Then it was ready to use. No fuss. So that's it. That's how I built the rolling plywood storage cart. 
I'm filling it up now and can't wait to get more projects going. What did you think of this build? Anything you'd do differently? Any questions? Let me hear about it down in the comments. I'm gonna link some tools and supplies from this video down below in the description. Feel free to shop those links. And remember that we receive a tiny commission from what you buy at no extra charge to you. As always, thanks for watching. Be sure to check back in for more videos coming up soon. And please consider subscribing and hitting that little bell button to turn on notifications. That way you'll know the moment we post something. I'm Ethan James with TheHonestCarpenter.com. I'll see you next time.